I, I have to be honest, on the wellness side of it, I was um, I was never a believer. It was just always something that happened. Like I've come across sports psychology a lot and people talk about it and how positive it was. But after three months of having Dermot and Albion, I couldn't believe the difference in the lads in both their own personal ambition, should we put it that way, and things they can achieve. Um, some of the lads would say, oh, we come from bad backgrounds or bad areas and this and that. And we're always trying to get them to, to look at that differently in, in that where you come from is actually your biggest asset. You know, we have kids doing four years of college on 420 points to get into to social care. And we're teaching these kids about how to become, how to work in areas like my Ross and South Hill. Yes, we, yet we have eight to 10 guys here who are from there who've lived it and who are far more suited to go into that kind of work, be it youth work or community level, or even just volunteering. So my name is uh, Avery Coffey, uh, and along with my colleague, Dermot McNamara, we have uh, practice in the called the Wellness Circle. And what we do is we're linked in with the Reclaim program um, to provide the personal effectiveness module within the program where we work with the participants on helping them to develop towards their um, vision for themselves post the program, be it through education, employment or formal training. So the Personal Effectors program has, I suppose, four core components. The first component is to help the, the participants become aware of who they are as, as people themselves and within themselves in the family and their community. The second component is to help them develop um, personal life skills for mental fitness and living lives that are more effectively. The third component is working towards employability. Um, so we work on things like CV preparation, interview preparation. Um, we do things, we use psychometrics um, to help them find the correct path that's suitable for them. And then the fourth component, which is post the program into the summer, we provide a bridge um, where we help them be supported through strengths-based mentoring, moving towards their vision um, into the following year, September, October and beyond. And that support is, is there continuously if they need it. The big thing that we help them get is a sense of hope um, and a sense of self-esteem. Um, and we try and provide them with that from what we call an internal, internal, an internal locus of evaluation where they don't need outside motivators to take responsibility for their own lives. Is that they can self say to themselves, you know what, for me I'm, I'm able to go my own direction and find my own path and I'm happy with that. So we really work on promoting that and then the output of that then is to give them confidence and once that confidence then is supported and what we call scaffolded afterwards with the right people, um, they usually bloom into the, and we've had some really good success stories with that. Um, but, but most students and most participants say to us afterwards is uh, that it has given them a step and plum, uh, platform for them to move on and progress. And that that support, knowing that they have a place and a, and a person and people that are in their corner um, really helps them when they face some challenges out in the real world and that they can come back and ask for help and support or and sometimes it's very simple it's just like picking up the phone and being a reference for somebody picking up the phone and being a source of support for somebody if you're doing okay you're going great you can progress um, so it's really you know as a community outreach program it's hugely important because you build the community from within and these people that, that go through this ultimately wind up taking up leadership positions in their own communities which is huge important. I think that's a marriage made in heaven um, for a very simple reason in, in our view is that because of the universality of football um, it has a social responsibility and what it does is it allows people through the medium of football to have um, what we call in psychology social interactions and, and we know Psychology tells us that, that the more um, robust and strong our social interactions are in our daily lives, that they are big predictors and determinants of health and happiness into later life.
that I think the link between MFC, LIT, the Reclaim program and the community at large is hugely important and that for these young people um, what's really vital for them the program is one piece of it but it's that the, the real bridge the people that they have around them and the people that they have in their corner after the program to help them on their next stage of transition because transition is the most important piece um, is a hugely vitally important ingredient to this because we, you know, we can do modules we can learn material we can do assignments but it's to know that I have people around me that can help me go to the next step. That's massive for me. Again, two things I would say. Well, first of all, right, that you know, practical, pragmatic steps to help people progress and transition. So, definitely around the employability piece. <clears throat> it's one thing developing employability skills, but it's actually to help people bridge into employment or bridge into training, or bridge into further education with a, with a proper pathway. So the more supports that we have, and sometimes that's not even necessarily financial, it's just having the right people at the table to help people um, break down those barriers and, and, and help them progress. That, that's one aspect that I definitely think is hugely important uh, post-program. Uh, the second piece of this right, is, is for people to realise that these type of programmes um, you know, while sometimes they're not attractive because they're preventative in nature and you you know, you wind up with small groups, but by the nature of small groups you get positive outcome. Um when you look at the, the over long term investment of them versus what you get out of them, um in so terms of social capital and social interaction capital, you know, the, the benefit far, far outweighs the cost of these. Um and sometimes the value of these things isn't appreciated. In the short term, the cost is always appreciated in the short term, but more medium to long term, you, you'll see the value of these, and you'll start to see the value of these in communities, whether people come through this, they maybe go to college, we've had people go to college, and then they go back into their own communities and become leaders in the community, and that's really how you develop and grow communities, from the inside out, but, but champions. The intergenerational impact of that, then, we're not just helping that participant change their life, we're helping that participant's grandchildren have different hopes and dreams and, and that's what you're doing, you know. So the, what I would say to any funder or any investor like is that to think more medium to longer term with this um, and see it in terms of social capital and community as opposed to like value for money in an initial outlet um, because for what you're putting out for what you're getting out longer term what you're putting in versus for what you're getting out longer term, really, really, it's far outweighs the cost.